Good evening, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Today is my 59th episode. Um, the topic I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, something religious. Uh, um, if you are Jewish people, you will know that the Halak or also the Torah uh, has uh, the sense of uh, a road that you have to follow. And if you're Muslim, the, it is the tariq that you have to follow. And I'm Chinese, you know, in the Taoism, the, Tao, the word Tao itself is also a road, a way to follow. Why are they so similar? Today I'm going to show you all the similarity between all these different religions. Some is we call monotheism, the other one is actually uh, without a god or anything. It's just like a principle, the makeup of the universe. So uh, if it is not uh, from a single core, you know, I doubt. So I'm going to start, you know, from the, the uh, beginning. I prepare, I prepare about 14 slides, but I really don't think I can finish it. I'll do the best I can, but have patience with me and type the na program name in YouTube, Basket Starfish, our language core. You can rewatch it again, okay? So um, I'm going to start from the beginning Okay, of course, I'm going to let you see uh, the uh, basket starfish. And uh, as I said, you know, the, the better form is that you imagine from this single core of human language and all branches coming out from, uh, uh, from 360 degrees. You know, it's just not flat. It should be just like a round ball, okay? So uh, the um, model that I propose is that I don't think we are all separate uh, family trees. And uh, because that uh, belief actually Actually, usher in human hierarchy uh, for the last 150 years the linguists has always pay attention you know to to grammar I think precisely it is grammar that separates us if you look into the core of the, the, the every word there is a, actually a core sound that you can follow so uh, I propose that you know we look at it as a one single unit we all belong to one single family so I propose that you please uh, change the view of this uh, family tree business okay and uh, my research has going been going on for more than 20 years I look at it from a female point of view and also I use Cantonese um, Chinese Cantonese sound as a, the base not Mandarin Chinese because uh, Cantonese is less mutated than the Mandarin sound so uh, here I'm going to start okay once again, like last week, I'm going to ask you whether these are uh, all the similarity are either coordinate or or they are actually coincident as they uh, think. Okay, so uh, again, I show you this T form, which I have show you uh, in the liquid uh, consonant as well, because this uh, symbol, because it's so uh, simple, it can actually be read into many different forms and different sounds. But right this moment, just try to look at it as the tongue okay so uh, of course you know I can chase it back to the early Sumerian pictograph you know this is the T form this is the tongue and then uh, as time went by this is cuneiform you can still see that for tongue right there and when become Akkadian is more cuneiform and more abstract you will see that inside the mouth by the way this square is actually exactly how Chinese write the mouth okay and so this is the tongue inside the mouth you still follow that and then uh, now you're looking at Chinese, you, we begin to uh, show all this sign in different ways of like breathing, like talking, you know, these are all uh, different Chinese uh, forms, you know, showing, you know, the speech uh, coming from a source and also maybe wind coming out from a source. Of course, that also coincides with a lot of the uh, biblical stories, okay? So um, um, the other one right here in the middle is another Chinese uh, determinative. We use it to um, to indicate all the words to do with rituals to do with a canon that or, or social custom that we have to follow okay so um, I also show you in real life this is the Tibetan way of saluting other people and then this is the Indian goddess Kali and then this is the Maui the oceanic culture I of course you know now uh, because of the uh, the internet because of communication after tourism sets in they have 
have a little bit different of explanation but I remember in the 70s 80s you know I actually saw still a lot of the uh, Indonesian culture and also Filipino culture all those uh, oceanic places they also have statues you know um, which uh, pay a lot of attention to the sticking out of the tongues okay so why uh, is this uh, symbol so so common so it went back to the very early beginning um, as I will show you that uh, how people uh, look at the tongue and the things that comes out from the tongue becomes the, the rule the law that comes out from heaven and uh, of course the, 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 if you read it as the T sound uh, you can link it, this with a the idea of the tongue and Tao is the Taoism for us to road and and if you're Jewish is the Torah and Torah is also the way to follow and then of course the uh, is, uh, teaching and then as time went by we begin to write all these canons down they become our rule our law and then also because of that it becomes the track that we have to follow so all this word actually has a very clear path of development so if you look at it with an open mind if you look at human being as a whole you will be able to understand it okay so now I again I compare it uh, um, with the tongue okay with the sound together so at the beginning it seems that a uh, human all believe that there is some kind of oral instruction coming from above uh, that is before writing so uh, we all know that uh, before uh, writing ever in was invented of course everything had to be had to be handed down orally okay so this is Sumerian you know we, they read it as meh they understand that this is um, uh, some kind of uh, metaphysic force that enable life okay so of course you know this is the tongue you see that it is the um of uh, that part is coming out from the mouth and that the energy out from the mouth that you think that the as you look as you read the bible it says that the spirit coming out from the mouth of the god and of course you know when you see it in a in a human side this is the tongue and me is also means language in sumerian but you will see that uh, the sound actually carries on when it becomes uh hebrew it becomes ome ome has all this uh, meanings means utterance the speech the word a promise or even command as you can see it depends on in which direction in, in which position you stand you know as a human being you would understand that uh, command is coming from above okay so um, uh, I will show you another uh, Egyptian hieroglyph this is more pictorial now and not as abstract as this form this is a real tongue but of course is a is a snake's tongue and as I said last week uh, the snake uh, was a very uh, respected uh, image uh, they are not verified before so uh, the abilities to speech is actually uh, very very respected so um, in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph there are two reading one is the nes and the other is im plus an r okay so uh, let's look at how they develop and actually this sound actually goes back to the Hebrew goes back to the uh, ancient Egyptian uh, ancient Sumeria and me actually gradually become the Amir in Arabic and it is the Prince or the Lord and of course you know uh, one way to say the, the, the God is also Lord this is uh, whoever has the authority to speak to us uh, the command okay and the N and the L of course you know they are interchangeable and of course if you look at Akkadian even this pictorial form you will have the uh, son of Nishanu and this is uh, the tongue you will see that the N and the L has a, a mutate uh, relationship and then uh, look at this uh, form right here once again the uh, Hebrew writing what uh, whenever is more simple simple you can actually read many many different ideas into it but let's look at it as the, the, the very similar form of this tongue in Egyptian hieroglyph this is an L okay so let's look at how they write the word tongue look at this Lishana and Lishon okay this is Hebrew and of course you know in Arabic this is Lisan and then um, this is another Chinese symbol for us it, it means the beginning you will see that the beginning is also like a fork 
tongue coming out from above okay so um, I ignoring the sound I want to show you the other symbol which means tongue in Chinese look at this frog tongue again this is again you know use the snake as a prototype and then um, of course you know in Cantonese you know uh, we still maintain a very ancient sound we borrow another writing you know for us the tongue is lay exactly as this li san also la shan but we just because we are monosyllable this is actually just the first part but then the sit uh, the the written part of chinese actually follow the s sound okay so you can see that these are actually compound words already and at the beginning perhaps a lot of the language were just monosyllable okay so again you look at this this is greek now you're looking at this is an l form okay you will see that is again a frog way and of course you know the lego is to speak and also milo is to speak you will see that this is like an indicator right there is the tongue and then the m sound goes back to more ancient origin the lego starts you know to stick to this lay lay sound you know in this level so you will see that as we develop we still share all, all the similar core sound okay so uh, the other uh, alphabet in greek is like this uh, for some reason the greek chose this two alphabet to put in the in front of the word glossa glossa for the greek is tongue again so for them may make this might not have even a sound this might be just an indicator a visual indicator okay as the chinese would do the chinese would have a word like this and then for us it is also the sound g and we say go go is to tell to speak or to accuse someone and so uh, you will see that is actually very very interestingly they all come in parallels in all the different languages so again um, if you look at each, um, Arabic you have this word gul and we have the, the Cantonese go and gul both actually means to tell to talk about talk and speech okay so again um, uh, if we look at Chinese again this is the word uh, tongue look at this frog tongue and then later on we have another symbol uh, you see this hand showing that someone has the authority of the tongue and what is the sound again is lay what is the meaning it actually means the overseer exactly like the way the uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph uh, split into the tongue or, or the, the someone who has authority authority to speak okay so the Chinese use the tongue exactly the same way in two different way either it's the tongue or an overseer the Lord okay so of course there's some official and then we have another word uh, Chinese a very visual right language so uh, we use another writing to indicate it but the sound is still uh, this is lay this is lay for us for our ear we can tell the difference but for foreigner it might be a little bit difficult for you when you do without the training but what is the meaning it means manage and it also means the logic and the truth look at this lay and the logic and this is actually the the legs in the in latin this is something about the rule the law okay of course you know uh, when i go back to, to the Chinese you know to compare with ancient Sumerian we have also this one that I have show you again and again they have the Lai or Li sound for us this is the uh, ancient canon that we have to follow that instruction comes from above or, or above for us it means you know the Lord you know someone human it, it, not necessarily from heaven but it, it means a canon that we have to follow but in the western world of course the Lai like all this sound actually develop into legislation logic and the law so we uh, take on different paths but the original call was very very similar so let me go on to uh, show you how the tongue uh, from the T symbol from the tongue to the Torah and for us it's all a way to, uh, to ascend because you are actually elevating your spiritual life and and why 
uh, in Hindi, it actually, or Sanskrit, Alaya, it means uh, the pilgrimage to go up the mountain. Of course, if you are Jewish people, it will be Aliya. It's just a change of the symbol uh, of the vowel right there. So it all means a road to follow, to go up, okay? So let's look at this as a symbol. The T symbol is a death symbol, but you can actually understand it from something coming down. Of course, in Chinese, it's a Do. It's like a way uh, to follow, or the Torah in Hebrew. That means the direction, the instruction. And of course, if you follow the T, it will be teaching or the token. And at this time, you know, they use a symbol to begin to express themselves. That's the beginning of the writing, because after oral uh, history, carries on for a long time finally human being you know uh, uh, develop all this symbol we begin this writing of history the writing of the bible and the writing of our law okay so um of course you know the law is to elevate us you know in a sense so we can live together in peace okay so um again if you look at that and the other way around you can actually look at it as going upward okay so uh, even the death symbol can be looked at it in a different way okay so let me move on to the next one uh, but then this one is a very very complicated idea be have patience with me it has to do with how the ancients understand the world because of the world around them it's about walking and it's about the herd migration okay I show you this symbol this you can find this symbol in early pictograph in the Sumerian or, the, or it stayed in the Babylonian but there is a very in, uh, it become like that in cuneiform but I want to show you a Chinese symbol look at that they are actually identical for us it actually become like this it divided into two, two different paths but let's look at the sound okay and uh, for us it has the sound of R ah, or it has sound of pat or he has the sound of so okay in Cantonese okay because Cantonese reserve a lot of these ancient sound and then the writing itself because of the confusion and the necessity to have different subtle differences in meaning it also developed in this kind this writing and it has the sound of joke for us it means the the food of course all this actually means the food okay and then let's look at uh, Hebrew now and look at this the sound this is uh, joke and this is show and for us th for the Hebrews uh, word this actually also means the, the lake the the food and then pay attention to this this sh uh, sign right there in Hebrew the sin and the shin is actually very similar to this you know the Chinese writing right there but for the Chinese the origin actually has the what came from the bull sign. Look at this Hebrew word now. Shaw, shaw actually uh, really means the bull itself. Look at all those and you just have to um, turn it upside down. You will see that this uh, this word is actually, you know, having the food with an energy right there. The energy of uh, is represented by the bull head and for the Chinese, whatever, whenever we want to represent the food, we actually use the bull head. So it gets confusing when you see the head, you actually need to understand it as the food, okay? But look at the ancient, I mean, look at Hebrew. It also, you know, the, the food and the bull actually you share very very, very similar writing as well so let's look at the other part of the world and this is ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyph this is Pat, which you can definitely see is a lake and but look at this sound compared to the Cantonese sound right there they are identical and then of course you, gradually you have the Latin pet which has to do with pedestrian everything to do with the food right so um, again you know from that of course you have the Greek podi podi is uh, definitely the food look at all this similar sounds right there shared by uh, what you call different family trees but if they are not coming from one single core how can they be identical okay so again this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph this has the B sound or the bow sound okay of course you can see that is the food but let's look at Chinese again as I told you before whenever you see the bull head somehow you have to understand it as some kind of energy or you can understand it as the food this is really means the food itself because as time went by you can see proofs that you know some people can actually write it as two foot 
prints or they can write it as this way and um, what is the sound for this one is actually has the sound of bow for us it means to walk to stroll and also to step exactly like when you look at the Egyptian hieroglyph right there how can again how can they be so identical and I pull in another one this is a Mayan uh, hieroglyph okay how can the Mayan the footprint also carry such similar sound like that can these all be coincident or they were actually uh, were linked you know thousands and thousands of years ago when they were still migrating around the earth okay so let's look at another sound when the Chinese having this the Egyptian having this and the Mayan having this the the Hebrew actually have this word also bo bo actually means to come to and also to do with walking okay so you will see see that these are all identical ideas and look at this why they add this olive right there the a because the olive actually also come from the bull head look at that the undertone of the word is always there to do with either the foot or to do with the bull itself so this cannot be coincident okay so let's look at some more and you can look at this as bulls bulls of course in greek is the real bull okay that's how you get the bull right there and of course you got the the word base to base is also the foot okay so uh, it's just that it's hidden some other way but I will, will show you I will go to the other side because we look at so many bull head let's look at the, the bull head in the west of course this become the alpha your A sound okay and look at the Chinese we already had that sound also you know more than 3500 years ago it also carry a very very similar sound when you have R and we have R okay so these are all the beginning sound represented by the head so that's why all this head and the beginning are so important that's why and the a and the b finally become the leading alphabet in the western system and that's why the up a and b add together the sound of up become the uh, Arabic word for father because the patriarchal world actually took over everything everything they they become there so uh, become a male leading world okay so but you can see very clearly that at uh, the beginning uh, uh, why the beginning word is to have to begin with beginning and why the Bible has to start with the B even in the Hebrew version and also in the Greek version they have to have the B as the beginning so because all these were a symbol for them since ancient time okay so now let's look at that um, this, this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph the head this is Chinese also showing the head but but you we use an animal head and gradually other than the bull head we also use the head of a deer okay and what uh, sound do we have for us colloquial Cantonese you know whenever you see the head we have Tao whoever leads is Tao that's why you will see that in the Western Phoenician system the alpha is the first uh, alphabet the Tao is actually the end the end is actually the beginning of the end okay so this is a very very confusing thing you really have to slow down to understand but in the Western world what is that Taurus. You will see that the Taurus is actually the bull in Hebrew, in, in, in Latin, and that comes, you know, together with the Taurus also in Greek, and of course the Thor actually is the bull also in Arabic, but you will see that the Thor and the Thor is actually identical between the Arabic and the and the and the Hebrew they are supposed to be sister language so the sound mutation is very very interesting it can become something seemingly totally different but the idea is that all these are related to head now let me show you about you know all this after we uh, spend a long long time roaming around the earth with a nomadic culture when we begin to live side by side when more population creates more conflict then that's how you know rules has to come in and this is a Chinese writing and this is what we call Dou okay Dou for us is a row you can see that the hand leading the head okay so this is uh, for us uh, the word for Taoism and also the word for road and path and the different reading will be Tao and Dao and Dou okay so you will see that it means the way the, the road and to lead but it, are we uh, the first? No 
you can actually go back. I will show you ancient Sumerian. They actually use a foot again. It goes back to this early system. You see, the sound is do. Do is to go. You see, once again, it has to do with walking. And then the do's, you look at this. This is sharing this symbol right there, this symbol right there. It is the, the foot with this energy sign right there, the bull head. And what does that mean? It means a path. So you will see that the do, do's, even to the Greek, or do, or dos, is still meaning the road. That what Jesus keeps saying that he's the or dos, which is the road, okay? So this word has a lot of ancient language so no one actually invented anything and it has a long long history back in in time okay so let me uh, compare this again the Sumerian do to go and do is to path and the Chinese you know because we are not limited by alphabet we can actually use hard memory to use this but you can see very clearly clearly that the bull head is right there you can understand as the food and for us Tau or tu is actually means the road or we can actually use the T and the D actually also interchange as I show you uh, before this is the word definitely use the, the Tau or Tao it actually means the road the way and the route and also become the word for Taoism okay and of course I bring you the Greek word or doors or doors is the road the way and, and this become the Christian way to follow, okay? And then the Sumerian, you have that, but uh, obviously they were actually more traveling by water because this is the water sign, this is the bow sign. But look at the sound though, the reek, the reek is to go, to flow and to drift. So it all depends on whether people are nomads in walking or they are nomads in just floating in the river. Because a long time ago, before road was actually built, it is actually easier to travel by river. We, we cannot forget about that, okay? So look at this. And then if I bring out the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph, you will see the leg and other than the pets, you know, but you have to pay attention. It has another reading as red. Okay, so it uh, you can actually uh, mutate it out the L and actually become the English word leg actually. And then uh, if you mutate, it become the road. And again, in Hebrew, uh, religiously, the leg is the way to follow in the Hebrew sense, you know, in the religious sense. And Arabic is the leg is to also the way to road the route to follow also in a religious sense look at that other than the T and the D look, look at this and the other second part is actually this part so these are all compound words already look at all this okay so as I said I can I don't think I can finish this uh, uh, all the slides but thank you very much I hope I can make some sense in your ears please uh, uh, type the name again in YouTube and watch it again slowly I hope I think thank you very